Hi, I'm Kevin Kelly. Today's topic is the question of what comes after smartphones. Is it possible that smartphones are the end of the line, the best thing that we can invent? Or is there something even bigger after smartphones? I think there is something coming that will be a platform even larger, richer, deeper, and more exciting than smartphones. I think that next operating system, that next platform, is going to revolve around augmented reality. It'll be the things that you put on your face and you see through, and you have another alternative world that's on top of this world. Let me take you, uh, walk you through four elements of what I think this alternative mirror world will consist of. The first thing is that, as I said, there will be devices that you wear, see-through glasses. They will be lightweight, maybe they're tethered to your phone, but they will be wireless and they will um, allow you to see extra information beyond the real world. So you'll see the real world. You won't be closed off and dark. It'll be just like the ordinary light outside or in a room. But in addition to seeing the real world, you can see as many layers on top of the real world. Maybe there's a virtual game. Maybe there's a virtual layer of information. Maybe there's a virtual screen that you can see. Maybe there is a virtual outline of a machine you're trying to use. Maybe there is a virtual shadow of hands that you're following as you learn to do something. There are many layers of information that can be put on top of the real world. This device will also have sound and audio because that will be a big part of what you experience in this world to make it seem real. You will hear things in a way that help you uh, turn and give your direction. Those things will also uh, be uh, an assistant like uh, Alexa or Siri and they will also do translation and they will um, allow you to listen to, in a foreign language and understand something in real time uh, understanding. So this mirror world is going to be viewed through these glasses, but that's not the only thing that's needed. In addition to these glasses, which many companies will make, including Apple and Google itself, as well as um, Amazon, as well as many, many Chinese companies from Enreal and beyond. These glasses require the infrastructure of high bandwidth. So we need 5G, we need the infrastructure of fiber optic connection because there's a lot of bandwidth that's necessary to make this work. There's a lot of bits that have to flow through. So there's huge opportunity for the companies that are trying to do compression or 5G or distributed microbeaming. All these things have to be part of this vision of the spatial computing in the mirror world. So the third part that's going to be involved in this is the AI. So in order to be able to see things as we walk around and, and have a virtual car on a street or a virtual player in a game or a virtual screen in front of us at work, we have to have cheap AI that's going to be able to map everything that we see. It's going to be able to parse where a tree is and where the sidewalk is. So there's a lot of artificial intelligence required to make this run in the back office. We won't, as consumers, even be aware that it's there, but, but it's like electricity. It has to be present working behind the scenes to make all this work. And that's also, again, a huge opportunity for companies or even vendors who want to design the system that can provide that kind of ongoing constant AI that's recognizing what we see and mapping it and taking it apart and saying this here is a door and this is a window and you can go through this door. It's the same kind of thing that will be used in the self-driving car. That kind of AI applied not just to cars, but also to us. As we navigate through the world, we also will have the same kind of AI 
that the car will have. Because even though we are deciding where to go, the AI is helping us to map this and make this virtual world. Okay, so the AI is kind of where we're going to meet. The AI and the AR world is where we're going to meet robots, where we're going to together work together and try and figure things out. The AI is sort of looking over our shoulder. It's sort of standing right here, looking through my glasses and seeing what I see in this world. And it can whisper to me in my ear um, if I need to do something or understand something. So the way that the AIs meet us in the real world is through this AR glasses, where we can have this AI official, artificial assistant looking over our shoulders, looking through our eyes, whispering into our ears. The fourth ingredient in making this thing that comes after smartphones, this mirror world, is the thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of small companies that are going to make the content, that are going to make the apps that we will use. And the reason why we're going to go there is we have to have people, artists and creatives who are making things that we want to see. And that's a huge opportunity in a very large world of mostly probably small companies in the beginning anyway, that are going to be making the material, the overlays, the, art, the, the content that we see on the virtual screens, the games that we play, the training that we receive, the um, direction and the um, oversight that we would use if we're in a repair company trying to fix a machine. All that material has to be generated, and that's, again, another large opportunity for companies that understand that the way that we make this material is not just going to be you take a movie and you move it in or you take software that exists on your phone and you just migrate it over. Everything has to be kind of made anew. There are new interfaces for understanding in this world. There's, we can't use the same swiping and scrolling down that we use on a phone. That doesn't work in the three-dimensional world. The menus, the mouse does, where we click through a Windows, that also doesn't work. So we need whole new gesture interfaces. We need whole new metaphors for understanding how we organize things. We need whole new organizational principles for search. We need to reinvent all these things and all the existing programs and software that we have today also has to undergo a change to make it work here. Just as people were surprised when they had developed applications and software for the desktop and laptops, and then when mobile phones came along, they, at first they just moved everything over, but it doesn't work on the phone. You had to actually make a new app that was mobile-centric. And we're going to do the same thing and make it mirror-world-centric, spatial computing-centric, and we're going to have to redo everything. That's a huge opportunity for startups who want to take another, get another chance, another crack at trying to insert their vision of the world. It's a huge opportunity for established companies who get to reimagine their own value and their own products in a new way as they have to reimagine them for this new environment called spatial computing, called the mirror world. So those four things are the ingredients of this next thing after the smartphone. It's devices, it's the infrastructure that's going to be provided by the large telecom companies, the, the 5G and the fiber optic. It's the AI, that's the electricity powering this new platform. And it's the hundreds of thousands of apps and content makers who are generating the stuff that we want to see with these new magic glasses. So that's what I believe is the next thing after smartphones. So that's the vision, the technical vision of the mirror world and what it's going to take to make it happen. But let me just pause a little bit and try and describe some of the benefits that that will bring to us as consumers when it does come. And I should say that this is going to take at least 
10 years, maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years, before it will be something that most consumers have. Just as cell phones really took several decades to move from being big clunky phones to smartphones. It, it didn't happen overnight. It took several decades. And I think this AR will, will also take several decades. But in 20 years from now, I think what we'll have is a world in which I can put on magic glasses, see-through glasses, and walk around. And what I'll see is um, the real world, just like I see today, but through some gesture, maybe I blink, maybe I move my fingers, maybe I say something, I can have a layer of information on top of that world. So every building that is out there will have a digital virtual building, a virtual twin of itself. And that building is something I can see and interact with. For a building, it may not be so interesting. Maybe there are some, maybe there's historical notes about it. Maybe if I'm a tourist, I would like to know the history of it so I can walk up to it and I can see, maybe someone talks, maybe there's someone standing there virtually who can tell me about the different historical aspects of this building, or maybe I can read it, or maybe I can see what the building looked like 100 years ago. Maybe there's another vision of it that's just right there in place. So it feels very real. There's a very place, placidness about it. That's one example of something that I might see with a building. There could be something that I wanted to fix, say, my refrigerator isn't working. I can open it up and I could see a virtual version of it. Maybe I can x-ray, I could see inside of it. And the refrigerator might be smart enough to actually indicate with maybe some kind of pulsing light where it's broken. If I was a repair person, I could turn it around, take it off, and I would have a virtual picture of the inside, the plumbing, and there would be a real pipe and there would be highlighted the pipe that I needed to pay attention to. And the virtual part could guide my hands and show me which part needed to be replaced. That way, I don't have to be an expert on everything. Just like I can look things up on Google, I could look up how to fix this and it would show me right in the machine itself. Or I could even have, again, my little guardian angel that's looking over my shoulder. Maybe there's an expert somewhere far away who really knows this machine and can see what I'm seeing through my eyes, through my glasses, and can see my hands and can actually whisper to me and tell me what to do. They are watching me repair this and they can guide me additionally. So that's another example of what we can do with this world. There is ways in which we can um, take things apart uh, uh, visually for those people who like to learn visually rather than just learning by reading or like to learn using their hands. I can take apart uh, a three-dimensional model of a heart and work with that and maybe make it bigger and climb inside of it in a way that I could not do with a book or even a YouTube video. There are ways in which we can um, take the same digital twin, say that it's um, inside a city hall, we have a digital twin of the entire city. It's replicated. It's a one-to-one -one map of it. And we can actually simulate something like a, like a, a evacuation of an emergency so that we can actually have the city fire department, the city police could rehearse a disaster in the actual place, in the actual town, walking through it. They could see imaginary fires on a house or they could see an imaginary flood, and they could actually practice in the very town itself what their emergency procedures would be. So it's powerful in that way. We can use it to um, do virtual games, of course. We could play in the real world, and the real world could be the environment that we're playing a game. We can have imaginary creatures like Pokemon. We could have imaginary prizes or levels 
we have imaginary um, challenges, but we can play in the real world so it feels very, very intimate. We can use this as a way to um, accelerate businesses and uh, business processes because um, we can actually simulate an entire factory. So all the pieces going through are going through in a virtual manner. There's a digital twin for everything that we make. And so that digital twin can be used in a computer simulation to see what happens if we speeded up the factory. If we saw what happened if we reduced quality over here, would it affect quality over here? So the the one-to-one -one mapping that we get with this mirror world allows us to simulate things in a precision and a confidence that we don't have right now just using numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. The final way in which we can use this virtual layer is that um, we can use it as a way of um, sharing knowledge. So if I walk down the street, maybe I'm interested in birds, and I found a nest, I could leave a note about that nest to someone else walking by. Maybe I would say, you know, here's a, be careful, don't tread here because there's a bird, or maybe there's, I saw this bird, um, it needs help, or maybe that don't go here because it's dangerous. There's ways in which we can fill in the environment, add to the world, add another layer of information on everything that we see. And of course, people will use that for advertising and spam, but there are, will be ways that we can filter that out. The idea, though, is that we can enrich the environment. We can add layers of information, and we can search the world in a way that we can never do before. What happens when we digitize the world is we make it machine readable, we make it searchable. So just in the way that we could search all books using Baidu or Google, we could search all the web pages and say, does anybody know, anywhere in the world do they know about this thing? Because we're gonna search for it. We now can search the real world. We can say, I'm looking for a park bench that overlooks a river that faces sunrise and has a big tree next to it. We can search for that now. We can find all the places in the world where that exists. We could search for all the places where there's um, a flood damage. And we can make a map of that just by looking at that one-to-one -one map that we've made of the world. And we can actually search through it. We can search for anything we can imagine and many things we can't imagine right now. We can search the real world because now the real world is now searchable by algorithms, searchable by the machine. And so we're making the rest of the world machine readable. And that's the ultimate prize that we get out of this new mirror world, this platform that comes after the smartphone.